Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. At the end of the game, uh, finished one all between Shamrock Rovers and Warfare. I'm just here with Christy. Christy, what are your thoughts on the game? Uh, first half, very, very power. Two changes brought us back into the game. We're lacking a striker. Lacking a striker. Sloppy goal. I don't know if it reflected or swaved in, but middle of the pack. We have a couple of fellas on the bench, I think, who come in to bring fresh blood into the team, into the middle of the pack. Great book out there on his own. You know, man, he's on his own out there. Second half, Dan Carr doing very well. He didn't get much of a chance in the second half, more but, you know, you know, one chance that he got in the second half. Last 20 minutes, probably all ourselves, you know? Yeah, I, I thought in the first half, he was real class midfield with Harry and uh, Keegan. Yeah. And then, uh, obviously, Stephen Bradley made the changes in the second half. And then it, it did tend to go more so in your favour. He's also doing very well to keep Doofus uh, very quiet. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I, I think Dufus is a very good player. We need someone like him ourselves. You know, we strike like him up front. I know Mac and Addy fans don't like him or Rovers, but we need someone strong and big that will help us hold the ball up for us. And then the, the midfield come up and help support them. Because when it's going up there, it's just coming back. And the two midfielders we have, young young Aaron Bulls is going can be a good player. But if he's playing in the middle of the pack with like a defensive role, he likes going forward. It's not good. He won't, he won't, he won't progress, you know? Yeah. But overall, happy with a point? Happy with a point from the first half, yes, very happy with a point, but probably could have got something out in the end of the game there now, you know? We have a good squad, but we think we need a middle striker. We don't get a striker, keep saying we don't get a striker. We're not going to want to this year, you know? Middle of the pack, book, go, go forward. Unfortunately, Trevor Clark's injured. That's, that's, um, and the camp, the fella has to go back to the left foot. He's, he's a winger. The two of them, they, they, they be doing the right to me. Up and down Bolton because Bolton got brought back to the left foot, the other fellow go up in front of him. But what he's injured for the September, I think, now. You know? yeah. Well, uh, Christy, thanks very much for your time. Okay, right. Thanks, mate. It's going to come again, I'm going Yeah, no worries. Uh, just here at Mac Dara uh, after the Shamrock Rovers won, Waterford won. What are your thoughts on the game? 
Well, it was a very tight game. I think Waterford were probably happy enough with a with a draw, even though they led for a lot of the game. They were kind of hanging on a little bit at the end. Rovers put a lot of pressure on, a lot of better performance by Rovers in the second half. It was interesting. One nil down at half time. Stephen Bradley obviously needs to do a little bit different. So they'd gone with three at the back, which is a bit difficult against a Waterford side that played two up front for most of the season. So he switched to flat back four at half time, made two changes. So so he went to try and get something from the game, and uh, Dan Carr came on as a. a second half sub and, and he really made the goal uh, beat the full back here then the, then the left crossed in and Graham Burke the man of the moment called up for the Ireland squad yesterday and he got his I think that's his 10th league goal of the season Yeah I thought between uh, Miele and Carr coming on really made the difference in the first half I thought uh, in the midfield Keegan and here he really outclasses in the middle but the changes Stephen Bradley made uh, seemed to change the game in your favour. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, like uh, like Alan Reynolds has had, they're kind of playing a diamond in, in midfield and, and Rovers have gone, it's like a 3-4-1-2 in the last few weeks since the Limerick game and it's really worked against Pats last week. They had to change it up because the the red card for, for John O'Shea. But Waterford, Waterford are an excellent, like the players that they have, particularly in, in midfield, yeah, and, and Keegan... He showed all his experience, but in the second half, I think Rovers got they flooded a bit more into the midfield. They kind of stepped up when when they could, uh, and it made it difficult for Waterford. Yeah, and they brought legs on. I think that's what really overran uh, Waterford down in the second half. And then the more Rovers got into it, the more uh, I think Waterford were happy enough to take the point. And were you happy enough for the point? Yeah, I think from a Rovers point of view, um, like the only loss Rovers had this season was the 99th minute uh, goal that both scored here so the home form has actually been really good for Shamrock Rovers the away form has been brutal only Bray or worse so uh, I think the 10 team league means there's, there's no easy games and Waterford are flying high they would have gone uh, maybe level on top of the table I need to check what the results were elsewhere if they'd won so uh, yeah I think uh, a draw I think Rovers next game now is, is away in Sligo uh, next weekend so they'll probably do well with that you know? Alright well thanks very much for your time uh, best of luck against Sligo Cheers Thanks very Thanks much. Nice. Just here with Shamrock Rovers fan Paul. Great name, by the way. Uh, what are your thoughts on the game? Obviously, a one-all draw. Um, how did you How did you feel it went? I thought it was a fair result. Uh, I thought Waterford were a better side in the first half. Um, Rovers came into it a bit more in the second half, but you know there's still a few players shy. Um, you know, the problem Rovers have is because they're putting so much money into the youth system and <coughs> the school boy. Uh, System, there's no money going into the first team, so you have to be patient um, and stick with Bradley. I think that's the key. I think if you're getting rid of Bradley, you're starting from scratch, so um, and doing it all over again. Like, yeah, it's just a waste of time getting a new manager in, and it's just going to start the cycle again. So, they need to stick with him and be patient, and uh, hopefully, we'll see an improvement in the next few years. Yeah, but your thoughts on the, on the game in the first half? What, what did you think of that? <coughs> I thought Rovers were poor. Um, Waterford were much better, so I think. Getting overrun in the middle of the park. Um, yeah, the problem Rowers have as well is it's too direct. It's, very, it's all long ball. Shaw was isolated. They weren't getting players close. He, he didn't look fit. He wasn't fit. I think he came off at half time as well, so he probably wasn't fit. But <clears throat> it's, so, it's just so disjointed. Um, it's almost, it looks as if they're making it up as they go along. But um, yeah, it's been the start of the season really so far. Yeah, but were you happy with the second half performance? It was a lot better. Um, it wouldn't be hard, mind you. But uh, a lot uh, Mila and Karen made a difference. Um, much more attacking. And uh, yeah, it was it was better, but there's, there's still a long way to go. All right, but overall, were you happy with a point? I mean, with Waterford are beating a lot of teams, yeah. and uh, like everyone seems to be beating each other. What Waterford have been excellent this season. Need to give them credit. Um, Considering the circumstances, we were a goal down, getting a goal back with 15 minutes to go. Yeah, point. The point was a fair result, and I'll take it. Yeah, so I'm happy enough. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for your time, Pat. Well, All the best. Thanks very much. All right. No uh, hello, and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're just here with Graham Burke after the game uh, between Shamrock Rovers and Waterford. Graham, what are your thoughts on the game? I think it was a game of uh, two halves. I think first half we uh, were miles off. I think like they passed the ball around. We couldn't. Get, we weren't getting close to people, and. Uh, they exposed and in the second half we changed that formation I think at the, in the second half I think we dominated the game where I think they dominated the game in the first half and then uh, we dominated the second half and then lucky enough we got our goal and I think we should go on and win the game from from after getting back level and then uh, unfortunately we didn't get, get the winner but it's still the way we played at the first half to come out and show that character and to end up getting a draw from it I think it's a good performance on 
than half. Yeah, and just in terms of yourself, obviously you got your uh, trademark goal as well. It's not, not a bad way to cap off a really good week for yourself, personally anyway. Yeah, obviously delighted to, I think that's the first header I've ever scored in my life. I think I think my eyes were closed when I hit it off my head. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm delighted to uh, get another goal and uh, for me it just builds more confidence for myself. Yeah, no, um, it's been a really good season for yourself so far. Obviously, you got um, Electricity League Player of the Month, and now you're after getting called up uh, to the Ireland squad. What are your thoughts on getting called up by Martin O'Neill, uh, the only player from the league to get called up? I think, look, I can't, I can't really put into words how, how I feel about it. Look, it's, a, it's a dream come true, and it's a, it's a great opportunity for myself. I just have to go in and try to show what I can do and uh, be confident and. Uh, don't feel out of place or whatever and then just try and play me football but it's a great opportunity for myself and obviously to get that call up I can't put it into words how I feel and I'm over the moon. Well we all especially Irish football fan TV are absolutely delighted for you and wish you all the best of luck and hopefully you get some game time so thanks again yes. for coming thanks on shall we? Thank you. Thank Thank you. Uh, okay one all at Tallis Stadium here uh, post match um, thoughts on the game thoughts on the game what do you think um, draw, draw a fair result? Yeah it's just like uh, Graham just said, Graham Burke. Uh, the game was two halves. In the first half, uh, in the midfield, I thought that uh, Heary and Keegan for uh, Waterford just outclassed, uh, outclassed Rover in the midfield. And Rovers weren't getting any joy at all. And as well as that, uh, up front, there was nothing really sticking for Shaw uh, at all. And he didn't look fit. So credit to Stephen Bradley in the... Um, or in the second half, he made changes. He brought on Melee and he brought on Dan Carr, and they made the difference as, as, yeah. as, you, as you've seen yourself. That was the thing for me. It was those changes because uh, Waterford dominated the first half. They had the best chances. I think uh, Rovers got uh, maybe one or two chances towards the end of the first half, but by and large, Waterford did, did all the did all the, the movement and that, and you know, were, were justified to, to be to be one nil uh, in front uh, but the changes in half time I think it's like tactical change as well um, but really really put some life on it the longer the game went on we were just I was almost waiting for the inevitable um, Rovers winner but it, it didn't come trademark Graham Burke yeah we were just waiting, waiting waiting for something like that it would it would have summed up a, an amazing week uh, for, for him uh, personally uh, and for and for Rovers but you know I suppose by and large if you if we look back at it now it's it's just after uh, full time um, a draw is probably the fair result isn't it really fair result I mean, it's hard to Shamrock Rovers credit that they kept uh, Courtney Doofus quiet which not a lot of teams have done this year and he did uh, gun them down uh, earlier on in the season they beat them 2-1 he scored two goals so um, credit to them they seen where they, were, where they had to make the change and to all the uh, bad press that Stephen Baddy has been getting he turned it around tonight. Yeah, that's a good Waterford side. Yeah, no, a very good Waterford side, and and that that's a very good point. Before we wrap it up here, you know, Stephen Bradley has got a lot of probably unjustified um, criticism, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's it's always going to happen when results don't go their way. But you know, you got to hand it to him tonight. That those changes at halftime, he was bold, he was brave, and you know, uh, he probably deserved the three points just for those couple of changes alone. But yeah, no, all in all, great night's entertainment here. It's a bit cold now, as the as the the clouds come in and the sun disappears but it was beautiful at the start there you know, we got this one really good shot that I think we saw it took the rounds it was just a quick snippet I took before the game just the, the sun shining down on the, on, the, on the stadium and it's great to see and uh, hopefully plenty more days ahead for us but yeah there we are folks that's been Shamrock Rovers 1 Waterford no, match it's day experience match day experience hope you enjoyed make sure to subscribe to the channel come on folks we need to ramp up those numbers like yeah. the video subscribe aiming for that 2k now uh, I think we're uh, 118 away we're aiming to hit that uh, 2k before May hashtag that shit right there um, <laughs> but yeah uh, I think we'll achieve it and uh, yeah guys for more videos like this we're going to games every week um, as you've probably seen earlier on in the video we are interviewing fans and stuff like that as well so if you see us come on over have a chat with us don't be afraid to uh, ask us uh, for your thoughts on the game as well as ours. All right, thanks for there. Watching. We go. That's a wrap.